Boy, oh boy, is this news exciting. Coal power generation in Australia is forecast to decrease by 60% within only eight years. 60% of the coal generation here in Australia will be dead by 2030. Not only that, renewable energy will take over the Australian market completely by 2050. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. Viking, great to see you. Now, I don't share the pessimism of this report. Sure, 60% by 2030, that's great. But renewable energy being 100% of Australia's energy by 2050, to me, that is a pessimist viewpoint. That said, this document is absolutely spectacular in nature. Here are the details of what is happening in Australia and how, well, fossil fuel powered energy generation will basically die over the next decade. The AEMO has revealed a new roadmap for rapid switch to renewable energy here in Australia. Why has it done this? Well, it's basically changed everything it thought in the past. Why? Because it's saying now that it doesn't make sense to keep running coal power plants. It's saying what we've known for years. Now, who is the AEMO? Well, first of all, Thank you to the person on our Facebook group who shared this article with me because here's some real good details to get your head around. And this is not just Australia. This is the same thing happening all over the world. The Australian energy market operator has declared approximately 12.7 billion of investment in new transmission lines should begin as urgently as possible to accelerate the transition to renewable energy and energy storage replace existing coal-fired power plants, and deliver a more efficient and effective grid in eastern and southeastern Australia. Now, I've got to make a really important point here. This is not about, this is not about emotions. This is not about whether you believe the world will turn into a ball of fire within the next 50 years. Or It's nothing to do with that. It's nothing to do with clean air. It's nothing to do with, um, you know, campaigning to do the right thing, which is important. It's nothing to do with that. This is this report is only mathematics. It's only purely cost-based. It's only purely based on, do we get the best return for our investment? That's all this is about, nothing else. So my point here is what I've been trying to tell people on this channel now for month after month after month. Renewable energy is cheaper than coal-powered energy. It's cheaper than gas. It's cheaper than the alternative. It's cheaper than the alternative pretty much anywhere in the world. I mean, if solar can be used efficiently in the United Kingdom and Germany, well, how how efficient is it and it's going to be in Australia? Yeah, obviously, right? Now, the Australian energy market operator has today published the final version of its 2022 integrated system plan outlining a 30-year roadmap of investments for what it said is a true transformation of the national electricity market from fossil fuels to firmed renewables. AEMO said the 104-page document developed with involvement from more than 1,500 NEM stakeholders calls for levels of investment in generation, storage, transmission, and system services that exceed all previous efforts combined. Australia is experiencing a complex, rapid, and irreversible energy transformation, AEMO Chief Executive Officer Daniel Westerman said in a statement. Now, I want to first preface this by letting you know they believe that by 2050, we'll need twice as much energy as we have now. Twice as much energy. So they're saying it's pretty urgent we get started on this now, today. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble because we need twice as much energy now. They're not saying we need twice as much energy simply because we're going to have electric cars driving and electric trucks and electric tra electric transportation. They're saying a big part of it will be the massive increase in our population as well. Australia is experiencing a complex, rapid and irreversible energy transformation. The 2022 ISP informs Australia's energy transformation based on an optimal development path of essential transmission investments that will efficiently enable low-cost, firm renewable energy to replace existing coal generation. Now, they're not saying we should replace coal generation because it pollutes and because it's mental and it's uh, 
we we lose so much money on it in Australia per year. It's like a massive loss making operation. They're saying it's because it's economically the sensible thing to do. And, you know, I agree on both counts. Not only is it economic, economically sensible, but it's economically sensible and it pollutes. So let's get rid of it. You know, it's incredible how here in Australia, politics plays such a huge role in the decisions our government makes. Our government doesn't make, on both sides of government, unfortunately, it's both sides. Our government rarely makes decisions based on the best interest of the people. It makes them based on what it thinks are the best interest in its own political potential, its own its own politics. And that is really disappointing. Australia's traditional fossil fueled fired generators are being replaced by consumer-led distributed energy resources, utility-scale renewable energy, and new forms of dispatchable resources to firm those renewables. But AEMO said it is critical the NEM provide the power system assets and services to ensure these resources are efficient, safe, reliable, and secure. The market operator estimates at least 10,000 kilometers of new transmission is required to connect a nine-fold expansion of wind and solar farm capacity and near five-fold increase in distributed solar by 2050 and to treble the firming capacity from alternative sources to coal, including utility-scale batteries, hydro storage, gas-fired generation, and smart behind-the-meter virtual power plants. Now, I should point out gas is not a very big part of this plan. It's pretty small. Five transmission projects across New South Wales, Victoria, and Tasmania have been highlighted as top priorities with AEMO saying they should progress as urgently as possible. The five projects, Hume Link, VN West, VNI West, Marinus Link, Sydney Ring, and New England REZ Transmission Link are all currently being assessed for regulatory approval and should begin that process soon. The five priority projects are in addition to another seven transmission links, including Project Energy Connect, and the Victoria New South Wales interconnector minor upgrade already under development. Westerman said the five priority projects would optimize benefits to all who produce, consume, and transport electricity in the market and provide investment certainty. These transmission projects are forecast to deliver 28 billion in net market benefits, returning 2.2 times their cost of 12.7 billion which represents just 7% of the total generation, storage, and network investment in the NEM. So you can see here, right, the mathematics make total sense. An investment, right, of $12.7 billion, returning a benefit of $28 billion. As part of developing the ISP, AEMO, and stakeholders identified the most likely future for the NEM, having considered aging generation plants, aging coal plants, in other words, technical innovation, economics, government policies, energy security, and consumer choice. The ISP indicates the NEM must triple its overall generation and storage capacity by 2050 if it is to meet the economy's electricity needs in the step change scenario. The step change scenario for forecasts annual electricity consumption from the grid will double by 2050 as transport, heating, cooking, and industrial processes are electrified and 60% of current coal generation exits by 2030, Westerman said. Coal generation will exit simply because it's not economically feasible to continue running these old coal plants, which are incredibly inefficient. To maintain a secure, reliable, and affordable electricity supply for consumers through this transition to 2050, investment is required for a nine-fold increase in grid-scale wind and solar capacity triple the firming capacity, dispatchable storage, hydro and gas-fired generation, and a near five-fold increase in distributed solar. Today, the NEM installed capacity of nearly 60 gigawatts delivers approximately 180 terawatt hours of electricity to industry and homes per year. In step change, utility-scale generation and storage capacity needs to grow 173 gigawatts and deliver 320 terawatt hours per year to customers by 2050 to serve the electrification of our transport industry office and homes. The ISP forecasts that variable renewable energy capacity will increase from 16 gigawatts currently to 14 gigawatts to 141 gigawatts by 2050. Additionally, distributed PV is forecast to increase from 15 gigawatts 
to 69 gigawatts over the same period. To firm that VRE and distributed PV, 63 gigawatt of firm dispatchable capacity and additional power system security services will be needed by 2050. AEMO also expects that coal-fired generation will continue to withdraw faster than announced, with 60% of the eastern seaboard's coal fleet to expire on or before 2030. Competition, climate change, and operational pressures will intensify with the ever-increasing penetration of firm renewable generation. Current announcements by thermal plant owners suggest that about 8 gigawatts of the current 23 gigawatts of coal-fired generation capacity will, will withdraw by 2030. In the step change scenario, ISP modeling suggests that 14 gigawatt hours will actually withdraw by 2030. Westerman said, the need to cost-effectively deliver the investment in firm renewables has gathered momentum in recent months. We've recently seen market dynamics exhibiting the step change scenario, including accelerated coal-fired power station closures. Why are they closing? Well, you all know why. In addition, generation of unavailability and high commodity prices further highlight the need to invest in the transmission plan outlined in the ISP to support firm renewables, it said. The ISP will help industry participants, investors, governments, and communities plan for the decarbonization of the power system to deliver low cost, firm renewable electricity with reliability and security. Importantly, the ISP will help meet state and national climate targets and contribute to economic growth through low cost, reliable energy. I'm going to repeat that and contribute to economic growth through low cost, reliable electricity. That's the future of the energy, energy industry worldwide, low cost and reliable. Now, even though people think it's the opposite right now, that is actually the truth. Wind generation, solar and batteries are absolutely the answer here. And not only are they the answer in terms of global pollution, they're also the answer in terms of cost, savings, affordability and reliability. And it's really exciting to see that this is going to happen here in Australia much sooner than what pretty much everyone, except me, predicted. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.